It has been a long time since I've made a razor video, uh, but I figured it was about time. I just cleaned this for the video and it's got fingerprints. I think the model I'm about to show you has a fingerprint resistant uh, technology applied to it, so I'll be curious to see how that does, but I just wiped this down right before the video and uh, it's like a fingerprint magnet. This particular iteration, I, uh, I did not do a video on. There was not a lot of difference between this one, which is the 2020, and then the 2019 that I did make a video on. Other than the upgraded processor, the video card, and uh, the hard drive, I think the biggest change between the two models was the addition um, of this card reader here. It's cool to just be able to plug in your card. So what I've got pulled up here is the new model that I just purchased. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unbox that in just a second. Shipping was ridiculously fast. I didn't even pay the $10 for the express shipping. I still had it in a few days. Uh, and once again, they've upgraded the video card. They've upgraded the processor. We'll do some quick testing and, and take a tour of the new laptop and see how it compares to this one. But physically, they should look identical. And then performance-wise, we should see a bump. Maybe my fingers are just super gross and greasy. I don't know. The 2020 has been a great computer. I've been using it for the last year or so. And other than uh, one of the fans that was rubbing, which I had to get inside to fix, it's been a great computer, no issues with it. The biggest reason that I'm excited for the new model, other than the, the power boost, is the addition of an extra spot for an SSD drive. Uh, let's go ahead and unbox the new computer. So this is the power supply. And I'm pretty sure this will be identical to the 2019 and 20 models. This is the new laptop. And longtime fans might actually remember back when the uh, Razer laptops came in really, really sexy boxes, but they've gone uh, a little more green here with their packaging, which is fine. I'm not in this for the box. Here's all the typical paperwork that comes with these. Hmm. I don't know if there really is a protective coating on this that uh, reduces the transmission of fingerprints. So this is the laptop, and again, like it should be identical to the previous generation externally. All the same ports, two USBs, USB-C, USB, USB-C, and then HDMI over here. The same beautiful laptop. I don't, maybe that's a little better. Hmm. Hey, look at that. So maybe it's not on the shell. Maybe it's on the hand rest here. Uh, as you can see, again, physically identical. You know what? That's not true. The 2021 screen is actually slightly thinner than the 2020 model. The depths on the body look about the same though. So the new one appears to be a little bit thinner. So while this gets ready, uh, I'll discuss some of the changes between the two as far as hardware goes. Obviously this one's got a better processor. It's got an 11th gen Intel uh, Core i9 and the old one has an i7. Uh, the screens are the same on both of these. This one has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM uh, running at 3200 megahertz. This one I upgraded to 32 gigabytes, but it's a slower RAM. Previously, I would pull my RAM that I bought out and transfer it to my new computer, but this is the first time I don't have to do that since this one actually comes with what I think is better RAM. And then the 20 has the RTX 2080, uh, and then the new one, of course, has the RTX 3080. So we'll do uh, quick comparisons to, uh, to look at the performance differences between this CPU versus this one and this GPU versus this one as well. And then of course the thing that I mentioned before, this one has uh, an extra SSD slot. So I've got uh, an SSD drive that I'll, I'll show you in a second and we're going to add that to the new laptop. So it comes with a terabyte SSD and that'll be our main drive, and we're gonna add a two terabyte SSD drive. One thing that I used to do that was a big deal to me is I looked for dead pixels, but honestly, with a 4K screen, the pixels are so small. It just doesn't matter the way that it used to. Um, so as long as the screen is pretty uniform, then we just call it good. This screen on the 2020 has just been phenomenal, and hopefully the screen is just as good as or better than uh, the previous gen. This is for the most part set up 
Uh, and I just, real quick, I wanted to show you, I was, was kind of, you know, messing around on both these computers here for the last few minutes. Um, there's a big difference in the number of fingerprints that show up on the new Razer Surface on the inside versus the old one. Um, in fact, I would say I've been touching this one more than I've been touching this one. Just doing a quick driver update for the GeForce 3080 uh, before you do any kind of testing, like with the 3D Mark, you always want to make sure you have the latest authorized driver where you can have an invalid result. It's possible people don't know this or don't care, but when you get a new laptop, you probably want to do a Windows update sooner rather than later. Uh, by the time you've gotten your new computer, your Windows software is already out of date. We're going to go ahead and get everything all updated before we do any kind of testing. This is the Fire Strike score on the 2020 Razer 15. Uh, this is with all the settings maxed out. Now I'll show you the results for the 2021 Razer 15. This test is run just on the batteries with regular settings. This is uh, all standard settings, but plugged in. And then this is with the max settings. A nice performance bump, both on the CPU and the GPU side. Pretty happy with the performance on this. So you can see that right now we've got a one terabyte drive included from the factory. We're gonna go ahead and put in this uh, two terabyte 980 Pro. I did do a video uh, with a hard drive replacement and uh, I think it was a 2019 Razer 15. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this uh, 980 Pro into the 2021 15. That's a lot of numbers. Okay, we shut this down. We're gonna pull the back off and then I'll show you guys the reason that suckers like me will upgrade from a 20 to a 21. Little bitty stupid thing, but I'm really happy to see some thread locker uh, on these screws because I've had Razer computers that don't have any kind of uh, thread locker and they, uh, the screws fall out. Here is our new drive and it's just gonna slip right into here. So we're gonna pull this screw out here, slide the new drive in and um, well, you know what, I'll do that and I'll be right back. I seem to have encountered an engineering issue. I put it all back together. I'll see if I can get a good shot of this. It sits in the connector slot okay, but then as you come across, because that plate sticks up too high, you've got this, uh, this SSD drive that's sticking above um, all the other components inside the chassis of the laptop. Um, I really am kind of wondering if this is a design flaw or if I'm just missing something. I know I've installed this correctly. It's, it's very clear uh, how this is supposed to seat. The problem is, again, that this side here just sits too high up. I feel like we might have a situation where people are just reassembling these and you've got this uh, hard drive poking out here a little bit. So uh, at this point, I'm trolling the Razer forums, looking for some information about how to install this extra drive. Maybe the little bracket was in the way, so I cut that off. But uh, the fact is uh, you cannot fit two SSD drives in here uh, with this bracket present. So the little ad that they produced is, is pretty misleading. I took the original bracket and I cut it up into these two pieces and I'll show you how those fit in. This piece is gonna sit right here and this piece is gonna sit uh, over here. So it's, uh, this piece is actually swapped from its original location. So this piece is held down by this one. So now we take our second drive, pop it in there, push this back here. We'll put this rubber ring on, we use this tiny, tiny little screw here. Screw that on, and then we screw this one down. My little screw that I had put here uh, broke off the base. Uh, I redid this piece a little bit. Uh, I screwed this bottom piece in, and this little top piece now pushes down on the edge of this SSD. This is all held in place, absolutely no no uh, hardware peakage. Yes, I just made that up. I coined the term hardware peakage. Uh, a lot of weight reduction, of course, you know, by, by losing some of this, uh, this little tray here. And, uh, and this is not touching any, any contact points anywhere. It's only touching here where it's designed to touch, so I don't foresee any issues whatsoever with this. 
We come in here and um, no, there is no two terabyte drive. So what do we do? We go to the disk manager and type that in down there. That's a program that will allow us to create and format hard disk partitions. Um, you must initialize a disk. So we're gonna put that over there real quick. So down here we can see that there is an unknown disk and it is one, um, 1,863 gigabytes. We need to format that so we can use it. Uh, since we're not going to boot off this disk, the partition style we're going to use is GPT. We're gonna go ahead and click all right. And uh, over here now we have disk one. We are going to turn it into a drive D. What I'm gonna do here is right click. We're going to create a new simple volume. A uh, simple volume can only be on a single disk. It's fine. Click next. That's the right size. And we like that. We're gonna assign it D. Click next and click uh, finish. That actually mounts the new disk. And so when we go in here, we can see that there is a, a C drive, which is again, the one terabyte. And now there's a new D drive, which is the two terabyte drive. Pretty exciting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make defaults for things like videos and pictures um, and downloads uh, all over here on uh, drive D. I am back from last night. Um, I take sleeping medication, so I might title this video, Watch Guy on Ambient Try and Put in a Hard Drive. The drive is installed, it has been formatted, it is working, um, and I, I am disappointed that uh, it wasn't simpler to install, but I actually think it'll be fun to try and find a nice little engineering solution to uh, mount that hard drive in there. A little bit better. But once again, this video is not, uh, it's not really a review per se. Mostly that was a video to kind of um, show the installation process of the second hard drive and to uh, explain um, maybe some of the differences or similarities between the uh, the 20 version and the 21 version of the Razer 15. Uh, so is it worth making the jump from the 20 to the 21? I don't know, that's up to you. Um, there is a pretty big performance increase. Uh, and, and again, the ability to add that extra SSD drive. Other than that, Everything else is, is really good. The, the sounds sounds good, the keyboard feels good, uh, the screen looks fantastic, and um, the laptop has been and continues to be sort of uh, an elegant um, design icon in the laptop industry. Uh, is it overpriced? Absolutely. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not buying it because I'm looking for uh, the best value. I'm buying it because I'm looking for um, very good performance in a very, very sleek, Apple-esque package. People are gonna be mad about that. Well, that's it. Uh, probably till next year when I inevitably buy another version of the exact same product because it has some tiny upgrade that I feel like I need. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm that weird guy that leaves uh, his, his stickers on uh, from when uh, he bought the computer over a year ago. That's me. This actually gets uh, a little confusing Maybe I should grab my other one. Well, as ridiculous as this sounds, I was confused. I actually have three of the Razer 15s with the um, OLED screen, so that's that's why. The 19 has been exceptional. I used it for a year, um, gave it to my son. He's used it for the last couple years. The 20 I used for a year, it was great. Um, and then this one I just got, so reliability TBA. It's even worse than I thought. I've got four.